I'm stuck. Beautiful. Alrighty gang, still a little bit sleepy. It is 5 a.m. and it's my birthday. So, I'm stoked. I get to go diving on my birthday. It's gonna be a little bit windy in the morning, but it should settle down from like 10 onwards. And yeah, could be even for all sorts. We're not doing a blue water mission. We're just going out and hitting reef. It's the part of spearfishing that I love the most. And uh, what better way is there to spend my birthday? In Fiji, spearfishing. Come on, it's not bad. It's not bad. Friends and family here would have been fun, but all the restrictions and everything still going on in the world is making it a bit hard. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, follow this episode. It's gonna be a good one. I mean, just for starters, that's the sunrise that we're getting. So, it's my birthday, dun -dun -dun, and we've got pancakes and jam, and this is my brekkie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So the plan is, today, we're going to go out for a dive, and we're going to shoot some fish. And that's it. <laughs> going to be in the water for it. It's not bad. If you're me, or if you know me, you know this is a pretty good birthday. Spearfishing in Fiji. Right, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this because it's delicious. Mm. Alrighty, so we loaded everything onto the boat for today. We've got two young uns with us, and then it's gonna be me in the water. Two young ones will just be dropped on top of the reef and basically just an eye light tag and uh, yeah, maybe parrotfish. But I'm gonna be targeting big boys and big attempts. I'm not going to put any kind of curse or jinx on what I'm going to catch today, but it's my birthday. I'm hoping for good fish. We're not going super far out, we're not chasing your huge pelagics. We're just doing brief. Brief is what I love the most, without a doubt. Um, yeah, really love the challenge of having brief species, so that's what we're doing for my birthday. But what point we go to? You know me, I love Heading out on this dive, I felt great. I was pumped to be in a beautiful location for my birthday and just have nothing on but diving. We go to the first reef, have a little dive down and see what's going on. There's heaps and heaps of bait action, which immediately made me think we're going to be onto something big very early on. You can see all this bait and it's reacting super quick. It's been getting smashed recently by something larger. I do a numerous couple of drift dives. I try going off the side, but the viz isn't that great. So I bring myself back up into the shallows and find this puppy. Now, this is so sad to see. I've got my fish up to the surface and it just comes off my flopper. I actually got tangled underneath the reef so I was completely out of breath and didn't want to risk blacking out. As a solo diver you got to take it careful. I think the red bass went into this hole but he was sadly never seen again. Green job fish, just the wrong place, wrong time on a nice dive down. Here I've got options. I could either shoot the Trevally, I could shoot the small jobby, or I could go for the Japanese large eye. I decided to pin the large eye to the reef because of it's a really, really tasting fish. I would say flavor wise, it's like a combination of a brim that we get back in Australia and a snapper. Here's a peacock hind. It kind of gives me an awkward angle to shoot him on. These fish will bolt straight into the reef, so if you see them hanging out the front, take your shot quick, they won't hang around forever. Beautiful eating fish with wicked colours on them. I've done my best to clean up the footage, so it was actually worse looking than this, it was a lot more green 
I've tried working the magic of color correction for you guys so it's a bit more enjoyable viewing but it really wasn't great viz down there four to five meters tops and that's hazy on this dive down I'm just hanging out waiting for a move That is so typical, you just need to be holding bottom time to get those fish in. We've moved to a different spot here and the visibility isn't much better, but I can see there's heaps of bait and other fish in the distance. I got a flash of a white tail and decided to go up for air. On my second drop down, I come down, planning to land and discover what this mystery white fish is. I take my time going down and just let myself drift right down, minimal movement, and with my eyes almost closed. As I begin to pull up my head, it's like a gift from Poseidon himself. Straight in for me. Bang. Can you ID this fish yet? We make our way up and the fish just goes like still, there's no real fight in this fish, I'm not sure what kind of happened, he just immediately accepted his fate. I know I knocked him in his gills, which would be like punching somebody in their lungs. Maybe I winded him and he wasn't quite ready. My flopper's closed for the second time. So I think at one stage or another I've obviously fired my spear into the reef and it's, yeah, knocked the flopper mechanism. Ah, oh, that's my first jump! <laughs> yes! Woohoohoo! Oh, what a beauty! <laughs> yes! Thank you! Oh. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy with this. That's my first mangrove jack. That's my first mangrove jack. Yeah. Woohoo! -hoo. Beauty. I'll show you that. Beautiful. Look at that. First mangrove jack. Stoked. With that spot having such good current and holding so much fish, I decided for a second dive. I got down to the bottom, I held on the edge of the reef, and sure enough, this bluefin trevally just came steaming through, there were two of them, and yeah, took a shot at him. I'm amazed that the bull sharks and the gray reefs didn't go for this fish as I was bringing them up, because he was creating a hell of a ruckus. Alrighty, so just to give you a bit of an update, um, it's 12.30, I am absolutely stoked. We've done a couple of reefs now, I think three reefs. I had a bit of drama with my flopper at the beginning, as you would have seen, so I lost a, um, a nice dog tooth, um, or red bass, whatever you want to call it. I lost one of those, back to you if you're from Fiji. And uh, yeah, that was a bit of a Debbie Downer to, to the start of the day, it was a decent fish. And, yeah, punched it, hurt it, and lost it, got it. So that poor fish is out there somewhere suffering, which always brings me down a bit. Um, but then we moved spots, dove down a couple of times, shot a nice Japanese large eye brim. Um, pretty happy with that. Then after that puppy, this is where I'm starting to get excited now. We moved to a different reef. I have a nice little drop down. And this is a reef that I've dove before, like I, I knew exactly where I was going and exactly what I was going to do, I had a plan for this one. Dove down, sat on the ledge that I'd shot a move previously, and just kind of stirred some stuff up. Went up, nothing really came in, went up, and then I came back down, and a move was there. And then I planted the shot on the boom. Cracking, went around the corner, shot peacock kind, and I shot a small jobby. 
and then we moved on to the next spot because that was just getting a bit hairy with the biz. So dropped onto a new spot that I actually haven't dived before, and um, yeah, have like a couple of dives down. The biz is crap. You'll see in the video. I'll do my best to show you what the conditions are actually like, and then I'll clean it up as much as I can. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So I'm super excited. So I see this fish, right? It's white, completely white. I have no idea what it is. It's kind of like mid-water, bolting away from me. It's very rare that I can't ID a fish. Like in Fiji especially, I've been here a while. I'm pretty good with my fish ID in general, and not to boast. Um, yeah, I didn't know what this guy was. It had me thinking like all kinds of things. Like I was thinking in my head, like, is it a Jewfish, like a Mulloway? Like, and it's just completely out of its zone, like, because it somehow got lost. And then I was like making up this story in my head about this like one lost Mulloway. It made it all the way to Fiji and yeah, completely out of its natural habitat. Anyways, dove down, saw a nice move, cracked him off. And it was a nice one. Um, shot placement was a bit poor, it's my fault. But uh, yeah, cracked him off, took, took him to the surface, crack him, dive down again, and uh, what did I come across? Two of them. Now they come closer, they're not like an emperor, but they're something, right? I knew, I knew there was something. As it comes a little bit closer, I'm like, oh my god, it's a white mangrove jack. This is sick. So I plug it, straight in the mouth, bolt to the surface, get to the surface, I'm stoked. I'm stoked, I've got my first mangrove jack right, this is my birthday and I've just plugged my first fish. This is insane. And because of that, that patch was just like a really good spot, I figured that I'd get the fish on the boat, lead it, like everything to do with the hickey and that, get him on the boat, and then I'd have another crack at a dive, because I saw a few other different species down there. And sure enough, I get two bluefin come raging in, and one of them just comes in right around the side. Now I've got to play it really slow, and slowly move around so I do more movement with my eyes than I do with my head and the same for the gun very slowly as not to spook the fish. I line it up off my peripheral and pull the trigger and plug. Get him straight in his face and yeah he's a solid chunk of fish. He gave me a good little fight and uh, you want to see him? I'll show you. So as you can tell, I am absolutely stoked. We're just crossing a bit of a bar at the moment, and then we're gonna head out to a place, I'm not gonna name the fish, but there's a certain part of fish out there that we're gonna target, maybe smoke, but what a day. Already, 12.30, 29, 12.30, smacked. Maybe a PB bluefin, I don't know, but I got my first mangrove jack. So, talk forever, let's get back in the water. So the fish that we were after was the Spanish mackerel. This reef is quite well known for Spanish mackerel, but unfortunately we didn't see any, just the old double lined mackerel, which in my opinion actually tastes better than the Spanny mac. But, lights out, cracking fish, happy days, another fish on the boat. Unfortunately this spot was absolutely loaded with sharks. There were grey reef and black reef tip sharks that were coming right up on the surface and coming around the side of us. And then down on the bottom there were a couple of bull sharks who were just holding down. Um, again this is really typical behaviour from the bull sharks just to hold down but if you've shot fish and you're bringing it up, the bulls will charge up off the bottom. Two white tips. These guys are always sus, they're always up to something. So we decided to move spots just because of if I shot anything I'd probably lose it to the sharks. I've only got a little six year old kid with me and uh, yeah, he's not dog gunned. So, being sensible, come across this lovely little long face and he tries outmaneuvering my gun but unfortunately I've got the double vendetta there and that thing is hydrodynamic as and there's just no getting away from it. A couple more drops down on these bommies and you can see that there's plenty of fish around. This is a really good sign. It means that there's gonna be plenty of fish. I'm coming down on the angle to avoid direct eye contact with this fish, making out that I'm not interested in, I just happen to be the way that it's going. Plant the spear straight through the coral trout's head. 
and bring him up to the surface. I feel really sorry for this guy. I've um yeah, I've not been <laughs> I've not been too kind with my shot placement. Not one eye, but two eyes popping out of his head. I put the fish out of his misery and ditched the spear before showing off to the camera. It's a beautiful eating fish. Highly recommend. I take one last dive down for the day. I'm absolutely knackered. It's been a huge, huge day on the water. At this stage, it had been like seven or eight hours of diving for me um, with not much of a break on the surface. And you can see a bit of my hunting technique here. I basically just drift right down to the bottom, try and go as slow as possible, have a little look around. That's a bit for sharks and it's a bit for fish worth shooting. And then get down onto the bottom when you eventually land. And then create a bit of a stir from you landing. Or just throw up some sand. And just kind of wait. Patiently wait. Having a camera on your head really teaches you about how quick you're moving. You might not think that you're turning your head really quick, but when you watch the footage back, you can see. There were Japanese large eye brim and moo in the distance but I've already shot those and I've got plenty of fish for today. The village is going to get more than a feed, so no need. And that's really important, guys. Take what you need and not what you can. If everybody did this, spearfishing would be the most sustainable form of fishing on the planet. I'm calling it a day. Got a couple of fish. All right, gang, what a day. Dun we got fish. I'm stoked. I'm a bit wrecked, but absolutely stoked. Got a cheeky little cold trout right at the end. And uh, yeah, it was good. Put in some decent swimming and uh, happy with the result. What a day, what a day. Set, so first up, we're gonna start with my personal best and my first mangrove jack. I'm absolutely stoked with him. Yeah, I couldn't work out what the fish was initially because he was completely white and I hadn't seen them like that. But then, uh, yeah, when he got a bit closer on the second dive, realized that it was a mangrove jack. Took a shot, got him straight for his face, in for his cheek, out for his mouth. Put up a good fight, but I got him to the surface and then put him down. Then we've got the uh, bluefin trevally and this puppy was on the same spot. I couldn't believe it. I just dove down again. It was a super fishy spot. The viz wasn't great, but he came around the side of me and yeah, put a shot straight through his head, in through here and out through his cheek. Put up a really good fight this one, but sadly comes with me. Then we'll go on to the moo. Not my best shot placement on a moo, but Managed to get a landing shot on him. He was moving away from me, but pretty good. Happy with him. Cheeky little Japanese large-eyed brim. Pretty happy with that. Um, he was just there, and yeah, these taste delicious. So if you see them, smack them. Then we've got a long face emperor. It's not the biggest of models, but absolutely wicked fish. Worth a shot. Smack. Shot a little peacock hind, he was just hanging out at the reef at the beginning and um, yeah not my best shot placement on him but he gave me a really awkward angle to shoot him on so you get what you're giving The chicken of the ocean, we've got the double lined mackerel, these guys taste absolutely wicked and if you've been watching mine and immersions or Michael from Immersion Fiji's adventures, these guys taste insane if you see them smack them they taste better than the regular walu then we've got cute little job fish worth a smack these fish are absolutely wicked i wish he was bigger but again the fish that we were given on the day happy with that all right and then last but not least we've got the coral trout also known as the donu and this is just a regular blue spot but boy, absolutely delicious fish. And yeah, cracked him straight through his face. I feel so sorry for him. When he came up to the surface, he was pretty ugly looking. I got him through just under both his eyes. And uh, yeah, but wicked tasting fish. Can't wait to eat him. 
and there we go birthday sick one thing i will say that i am going to miss about fiji is going out catching the fish and then having other people process the fish for me absolutely amazing and i am so incredibly grateful for other people doing this especially after a, like a long eight hour dive really the last thing you want to be doing is kind of fill it in processing fish and then cooking so to have other people do it for me that's wicked that is my ultimate birthday treat and present it's actually really interesting to see all the different methods that they use for the different fish and how they process it and how they get cut up and distributed into different areas we then hop back on the boat quickly to run and grab some beers because of what's a birthday celebration we've had a couple of beers and there we go beers on board Alrighty, so I've just done a sneaky little mission on the boat to retrieve a couple of these boys, the Fiji Golds. Can't have a birthday in Fiji without getting on the Fiji Golds. So yeah, it's gonna be a nice chilled evening eating mangrove jack and enjoying beers. Why not? We'll get on the carver too. It's gonna be fun. Another dog eye. Sunset's behind me. Alrighty, so this is it to be in 29. And this isn't an advert for Fiji Gold. It's just bloody good when you're in Fiji. Not bad at all. Alright, so we're keeping it Fijian. We've got the cassava and the mangrove jack in Lolo. Alrighty guys, so now it is time to tuck in. We'll just try some of the Lolo first. Tastes like fried fish in Lolo. Here's some of that juice on the rice. Make it all good. And then we're into it. Mm. That is good. All right, get ready for the bones. Here they come. Bum -ba -da -dum. So basically, it's got all the bones you can imagine and probably some more, but that's the way that they do it here in Fiji. So I can see a massive bone there. Let's take that out. And another little one there. Gets fiddly real quick. But it tastes, oh, so good. Mm hmm. So I don't know if this is how like mangrove jack normally tastes, but it's like chicken. That tastes so good. This is my first time eating this fish, obviously. Oh, the flavor. I actually really wish that I tried this sashimi as well, but hey ho, what do you know? So, so yummy. So, yeah, this is my birthday meal. 29. Hope you enjoyed the sunset. I'm um, going to finish this continue on the beers and uh that's the end of the episode hope you've enjoyed guys take care